All right, it's going to be a little bit of a different demonstration today, um, mainly because we've got a couple of screens. So I'm going to wave at you from here, from my one of my cameras, and I'm going to wave at you from this one as well. Um, right. A couple of weeks ago, uh, I did show a demonstration of the routing curve uh, when I did this uh, routing curve example on my robot arm. Um, I did show this photograph and this is where I'm sitting right now and this screen here is the one that you can see over there and the robot is now with me uh, clamped to the desk and it's an interesting one because you know who hasn't thought that oh you know how can I connect this to the physical world and it would be so nice if I could just control that thing uh, from this thing here and in fact that's what I've been able to do so before I explain how I did it, I'll just show you what I can kind of do. I can initialize it. I can wave. I can put it back to sleep again. Um, I can also do a couple of things like if I initialize it this way, you can see from this side, if I update uh, Unshape, it will actually um, update the position here. And vice versa, if I change the position of the robot arm in Onshape, perhaps through ooh, a named position or some other thing, but I'll just drag it here on my own, uh, make sure I don't hit the desk, I can update the robot as well, and you can see how it updated. Now, I don't know if you can see from the side there, so maybe I should make that go to, you know, closer to me. Uh, let's update the robot. Okay, open the jaws. Okay, so we can have fun both ways, you know, communicating from Onshape to the robot or from the robot back to Onshape. It's a lot of fun. Now, how am I doing this? Well, the answer is through APIs. And we all know about uh, custom features in Onshape and how in a part studio you can create custom features uh, using the feature script language to extend the modeling capabilities and some of the other things inside the part studio. But what happens if you need to go beyond a part studio? Well, the answer is uh, you can use the Onshape's API for that. So Onshape's a modern application. Uh, there's a REST API into many of the, uh, the, the functions and operations and calls that it makes um, to between the server and the client. Um, and that's the way that modern web applications work. So we can look at the... Uh, you know, if we look at uh, Glassworks API Explorer, if we have a look in here, uh, this actually documents the API. So, you know, there's a, a lot of things in here. But if you just for examples, if you have a look at what you can do with the parts studio, um, these are the endpoints for parts. So if you're looking to extract mass properties, you know, this is the call that you're going to need to make. And it's all fully documented here. And you can actually use this Glassworks Explorer um, to try uh, some of these calls and see what the responses are and you know so on and so forth there's a lot uh, of, of things that are probably way beyond the scope of this and your own uh, what you need to you do but things like assembly uh, part um, you know those uh, configurations these are sort of typical things that you probably want to do and interact with in your own applications so how did I do it here well, um, I created a web app which runs in this right-hand panel. We call this an app extension. And you can make app extensions run in many different ways and places. Um, you can run them as their own tab down here. Uh, you can run them in, the, uh, in their own panel here, like I'm doing right now. You can make it so that it works on a context menu. Yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do. In fact, Onshape itself is, you know, the, the perfect example of how you can make web applications <laughs> work. Uh, all of the things we're doing here are basically going through you know, API calls as well. So what did I want to do? Well, I needed to connect to a robot. And believe it or not, well, probably, you know, it's going to be pretty obvious that the robot is running software as well. Now, that software is actually coming from some people called Phospho. All right, you can look these people up there in France. And there's, I'm running a web application here called Phosphobot, which is a controller for robots like this. And there's a big emphasis on AI training, which I won't go into today. 
Um, the thing that I really was excited to use and, and got going really quickly was the APIs. And you'll notice how very similar this looks. Um, you know, this, this is the API Explorer for the Phosphobot application. And you can do things like read the position of the joints. You can read the position of the end effector. This is the end effector. So depending on what orientation and, and translation and it's in, um, you can get that back. In fact, let's, uh, we could try it out now. You know, we could initialize the robot. So I just hit this endpoint here, which is move initialize. And then I could try this one here where I'm just going to read the position of the end effector. And of course, it's going to be all zeros across uh, because it's in its zero, 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 zero position um, with the jaws completely shut. So in example, so this web app here, and I'm, I'm using their web page uh, to, to access it here, um, is running on my computer. It's running on localhost and its APIs are offered up through those endpoints. So then it's just a matter of writing my own little application, which can speak on Shapes API language and speak to the Phosphobot API as well. So that's what I used. And there's many, many different ways you could run a web application. And there are many, many different places you could run it. Um, the simplest possible way for me to do this was to run a Python Flask application right here on my own computer. So that's what I did. Now, if you want to know more about this, you can go to the PTC Education GitHub um, repos, and there's one called On Shape Integration Guides, and there's a really nice one uh, that the education team put together called Introduction to Integrating Flask Applications into On Shape. As the name suggests, this is exactly what you want to do. This is the very simplest way to create your own web app and run it and then have it called through URLs, um, basically through the way that you would uh, you, that you need to do it through the REST APIs. So we've got this web application here, and now you can see I called one robot controller, written in Python. It doesn't consist of many files. There's a couple of templates for the CSS, um, and that's about it. So there's one big Python file, which is the application. And it's not that big, it's about 400, lines long and a lot of this is boilerplate code a um, bunch of imports as you would have in any python application here or any application um, there are some variables that you need to set up then this next whole bit here which is with the oauth uh, if you look from this bit here and then this whole set of entry points here all of this is boilerplate including the OAuth redirect here. This is all boilerplate code, which is explained in back in this example here. So basically just cut and paste that in, change a few variables, because uh, I actually wanted to access a couple more things with configurations. Um, so I added my own variables, right? And then uh, it, it's pretty easy because it's just a, uh, an interplay between the web template the HTML template that's that thing running in the right hand side of the page, this thing here is pure HTML code. And, and when you press these buttons, it's actually calling a different entry point on this Python script. So for example, when I hit the sleep button, uh, it would come and call this function called sleep and it would post to API. So this is my function call to the Phosphobot endpoint, which is move sleep. Remember, we could go back over here, have a look at the API, and then there's something called move sleep. So that's the endpoint, and it doesn't take any parameters, it just puts the thing to sleep. All right, so I'd created a bunch of little functions like this, one to initialize it, one to put in initial position, uh, which is what it's in right now, uh, one in the sleep position, uh, and let's try that. Let's put it to sleep again. There we go, that's the sleeping position. And then what are the other ones? Let's see, I had hello, which would just wave, it kind of waves its fingers a little bit. And then there's some other functions. Now these are just, you know, you can see here, it just moves relative or it moves to hello position or moves to sleep position. Um, there's nothing too fancy in there. Now what I did do is wrap up some um, functions from Onshape down the bottom here, which is, what I needed to do 
so that I could communicate from the robot to Onshape and vice versa from Onshape to the robot. The first of these was, well, there's actually two. There's get mate positions and then there's a set mate positions. So I'm getting mate positions here. So you can see if you're following along here, forget about the rest of this, this is all boilerplate apart from you know this one line here. It's actually a much, much simpler than it looks. Uh, and so it's very easy to grab someone else's example and start playing and adjusting, um, which is kind of the way that I did it anyway. So what you need to do is make this call, and this is exactly the same thing, you know, if I go to uh, the Glassworks, well, not, not the Phosphor bots, but on shapes thing here, and Rich is about getting the mates, all right? So let's find that, uh, mate values, all right. Oh, this one's under these, right? So you get the mate values and you know, there's a couple of checks to see if there's a configuration there. If it, if there is a configuration, then it uses a slightly different call um, to get the configuration or to sit, to get the configuration um, value. And then it just returns that. All right, so that's what that function does. It just gets the position of all the mates in your on-shape assembly. So now that we know those positions, of course, we're going to be able to do something with it over here. In reverse, the other way is to set the mates in on shape, which is again an API call again to mate values, but it takes a slightly different um, uh, bit of data that you need to put in. And this data here is going to be obviously the, the six orientations of the mates that are in the on shape assembly. Um, so that is the that's really the extent of the APIs that I need in order to access and set and get uh, in Onshape. And then both those can work together. So now that I can get the position of the mates in Onshape, then I can come in and set them in, um, you know, I can use the move commands or move to or set positions of the robot. Let's have a play with that again, just quickly. Um, so here I'm going to move the robot around a bit and make sure I don't poke myself in the eye or something. Um, I've moved the on shape assembly. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six mates in here. I've conveniently called them Revolute one, two, three, four, five, six, just so you can see. Here they are. These are the positions of the six servos. Now, when I update the robot, what it's going to do is read these six positions from on shape and then send them back to the robot and set those positions in the robot. Let's try that again. Yeah, that looks pretty close. A little bit of a bend here. Yeah, that's right. Is this thing still play? Okay, let's move this around like that just a, a little bit. So let's update the robot. Yep, okay, there he is. <clears throat> now we just initialize that again. Okay, initialize. Now, you can see here that I've initialized the command to this robot. I need to get this guy to update. So I'm gonna update on shape. That's going to read these positions and then set them in on shape. There they are. All right, so you probably can't see from this camera the angle, it's pointing straight away. Um, so that's probably the view that you'd be getting. Uh, anyway, that's what it is. Now, just as a final, um, ah, so okay, so that's that's really the extent of the program. And what you do is you run that program uh, using Flask. And it's a pretty simple command. If I stop it and start it again, you'll see that I'm just running a Flask app on port 8000. So it's running. Nobody else can access at the moment. I'm just using it uh, here. And, you know, if I... Just close it and start it up again. You'll see it connects to my USB port. This cable here is the USB port. Oh, I've got a lot of cables here today. This is the cable going from my USB port on the computer to the USB controller on the robot. Okay, and that's giving me an address. Um, yeah, so all those com commands are active. And just, you know, why am I doing this? Well, one of the things is that I can't reach my coffee, so I'm going to get the robot to go and grab it for me. And let's see if it completes this task. Ah, very good. Now I'm going to open the doors. Thank you for the coffee. 
that's my quick demo of Onshape's APIs, talking to a third-party APIs and having a lot of fun at the same time.